What's happening everybody? It's Rob here from the Basement Bike Shop and in this video I'm going to go over the complete installation of the Odyssey Keychain Hollow Pin Chain. Now if you're thinking about getting this chain I recommend getting the Odyssey Chain Breaker also. I started off using my Park Tools one and had to get the Odyssey one when it came to working with the Odyssey Chain but I'll get more into that later. So out of the box we have the chain an adapter for your chain breaker and some extra screws for your master link. Now I chose this chain for three reasons really. Number one, it's strength to weight ratio. I feel like it's as strong as a shadow conspiracy chain with the thicker side plates and the hollow pins, but weighs more like a 510 or 510 hex chain. Two, I like that the master link and the half link that it comes with are put on with a three millimeter hex key. I like the fact that I can take the chain apart and put it back together just using an Allen wrench. And three, I think it just looks really cool with the hollow pins. So the first thing I'm gonna do is loosen up my back wheel. You don't necessarily have to take the wheel off, um, but there should be some slack in the chain when you do this. In fact, I like to keep the wheel on it kind of just holds the chain in place instead of me trying to fumble with the chain breaker and the chain at the same time if you have chain tensioners we're going to loosen those up too and then i'm going to take my chain breaker and my park tool chain breaker has a sliding plate because you always want your chain against the back block. Now the Odyssey chain breaker has an adjustable back block so you can uh, screw it into the chain. And then we're just gonna push the pen out of the chain. Now I like to leave it hang just a little bit on the inside of the chain so that when I go to put it back together a chain ever uh, it kind of hooks the other end of the chain and holds it while I get the chain breaker now there's two main ways to measure your chain length for your new chain and one is if you have an old chain on that bike you take that chain and lay it right next to your new chain And then wherever that chain ends, that's where you break the chain. The other way is to physically put the chain on the bike. Now a little trick that I learned is to take all your measurements off of the sprocket. The sprocket teeth will help hold the chain in place while you're measuring or adjusting to see exactly where your chain is going to go. A lot of times, you know, with the use of a half link, there are two positions your chain can go in, um, slammed or just back a little bit. If you don't have a half link, a lot of times there's only one position it can go in, but make sure on a chain like this that there's an outer link and an inner link and where they line up, and that'll determine whether you need a half link. Now, if I put it on like this, I do not need the half link because it goes outer, inner, outer, inner. If I were to pull it a little bit further and have it slammed, like that, then the two outer links overlap. So then I would need the half link in there, like that. Now that we have the position where we wanna break our chain, we can go ahead and get our chain breaker and break our chain to the correct length. And this is where I had all of my problems. So I took my park chain tool and the chain adapter that they gave me and I proceeded to take my chain tool apart and put the adapter on it. But the adapter did not fit over my standard pin. So then plan B. I went into my box of pins and got them all out and found a park pin 
that it did fit over. And then I took the pin out of my chain tool and put the other pin in. Screwed it down, I put my adapter on, I put it back together, and then I went to go break the chain in the place that I wanted to break it. The problem I had here was that the pin wouldn't push through the slot in the back block. Now it's great that they have a pin adapter for your chain breaker, even though it didn't fit on mine. But if the slot on the block is meant for a regular size pin, then a hollow pin is not going to push through it. But I wasn't giving up that easy. So plan C was I took an old park chain brute that I didn't care about. I put the smaller pin in it that the adapter fit over. And then I was going to drill out the back block to make it bigger just to accommodate this chain. All I had to do was break this chain once. But I snapped my drill bit. Luckily I wasn't hurt in the process. But at that point I knew it was time to give up. And I went out and bought the Odyssey chain breaker. Now although I was mad that I had to go out and buy another chain breaker, I really wish I would have bought this one first. Uh, it's a very very nice chain breaker and less than half the cost of the Park CT 3.2 but I'll do a full review of it at the end of this episode. And then after you tighten the back block against the chain, just like any other chain breaker, you're gonna screw in the pin remover and push the pin through the hole in the block. Now, if you get done and your adapter is stuck inside your chain, just turn your chain around inside the chain breaker remove the back block completely and use the tool to push the pin adapter right out the back side. At least that's what I did. And now your chain is cut to length. Then we're going to remove the half link. We're going to use a three millimeter Allen wrench. One side of the link is threaded and the other side has a screw pin that goes into it. Next, we're going to install our new chain on our bike. With the chain tensioners and axles still loose, we're just going to wrap the chain onto the frame. Now with this chain, you have to hold the two ends together along with the center pin sleeve spacer type thing. And I found that it was the easiest to just put a spoke through the whole thing to hold it until I was ready to put my threaded master pin in. And then I'm just going to push the spoke out as I push the threaded pin in. And then take my three millimeter Allen wrench and tighten it down. And then after that, we can go ahead and spin the chain on. Make sure it's on the back cog and then just spin it on to the front. Now remember, this Allen key always tightens from the right side, not the outside. So if you're running left hand drive, you're actually tightening it from the inside. And then we'll go ahead and pull our chain tension. And tighten down our back wheel. Remember to make sure that your chain isn't too tight. There's usually a tight spot and a loose spot in your chain. Always set your chain tension to the tight spot so that there isn't a spot where it gets way too tight, wrecks the bearings in your driver or your crank or wrecks your chain or your sprocket. 
If you want to know more about setting your chain tension without chain tensioners, check out my tire and tube changing video and I'll go over both ways at the end of that video. Okay, now let's talk about this chain breaker. It has an adjustable block on the back side, which I like a lot. Comes with a pin adapter itself for the hollow pin chain. And it costs less than half of what the Park Tool CT 3.2 costs. Now I know my view is a little obscured before, but how it works is you tighten the block against the chain and then push the hollow pin right out the other side. But to really test it, we have to break the Shadow Conspiracy V2 half link chain. That's one of the hardest chains in the industry to break thus far that I've found anyway. I've snapped many a chain tools trying to break the V2 chain. They even say that the Shadow Conspiracy chain breaker doesn't work good on the V2 chain, which is kind of crazy because that's the chain it was made to break. But our Odyssey chain tool had no problem breaking it at all. All in all, I recommend this chain tool. I was mad that I had to purchase it only because I wish I would have purchased this chain tool first. I would have saved a lot of money and it would have worked great for all the BMX chains that I had to break. And that wraps it up for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, uh, installations, removals, or reviews, of products or tools um, you can comment below or send me an email if you like what you saw go ahead and subscribe and I'll keep these videos coming I put out a video a week so turn on those alerts if you don't want to miss it and thanks again for watching